Dear participants, welcome to the Sulpiter Open Training event, second part. This is the second uh, uh, part of the webinar dedicated to the um, Open Training events. On behalf of the Sulpiter Partners uh, and of uh, ITL, coordinator of this project, uh, I uh, welcome you uh, for this second part. Sulpiter, uh, I, I will make a very short introduction in order to, to uh, understand to those that were not present in the first part uh, what uh, this webinar is about. Uh, Sulpiter stands for Sustainable Urban Logistic Planning to enhance regional freight transport. Uh, it is a Central Europe project with 14 partners working on uh, seven areas, functional urban areas, on sustainable urban logistic plans, which has a wider approach than the mm, typical city logistics projects and uh, then at metropolitan area. The project will end in uh, May 2019. Why I say um, with another perspective? Because uh, uh, the mm, um, typical city logistics solutions are related to the historical urban centers. Here in this project, uh, we are focused uh, on extra urban and uh, metropolitan context. So we are focused uh, on all the, those problems which are suffering the short distance and the city logistics solutions, of course, but we are not considered intermodal transport, of course, in this project. The project, uh, to say in uh, a, a couple of words uh, what is about, uh, it, it has uh, three main pillars, which are the understanding, the participatory process, and the development of the sustainable urban logistic plans. All these three main pillars have a lot of activities. We are completing the first part, the understanding, and uh, uh, we are activating the participatory process. Next year, we will work and we'll be will be focused on the sustainable urban logistic plan development. As you know, urban freight uh, had uh, a lot of problems in the years. Uh, some public actions uh, were performed, but uh, at the moment, uh, the uh, urban freight has still, uh, is still uh, a big problem for the cities. Possible reasons are that measures are related only to the city centers or because uh, they are not considering uh, trends and uh, um, what in the entire supply chain. Trends, uh, which is one of the uh, activities we performed in this project, uh, so we identified some trends which are the added value for different participants in this uh, webinar. And uh, we identified also some best practices and evaluate the possible scenarios. Altogether, uh, these activities uh, are part of this important webinar. And what is the added value for the participants? Uh, of course, public authorities can benefit from this uh, webinar in order to plan in a better way their logistics measures or to logistic providers in order to be aligned with the future services with trends we are uh, we we analyzed and so on also to the research organization in order to do to increase the knowledge of university and new research topics what is the road to the training uh, this uh, um, activity is uh, uh, part of two important reports uh, delivered in, uh, in, within uh, the Sulpiter project. Uh, the first one is the desk work, what, which was developed by University of Maribor, and the second one is the Delphi analysis developed by the uh, Institute for Transport and Logistics, ITL. Of the desk work uh, is about uh, freight transport in functional urban area and aims to summarize freight transport trends. Um, the methodology was very similar to the um, Delphi analysis in order to uh, identify different categories and it was developed by the University of Maribor. Delphi analysis, uh, as I said, was developed by ITL with the support of Steve Davis, I believe, and it is um, 
uh, an analysis which aim to inform and support authorities in developing uh, sustainable urban logistic plans. Uh, it was possible to select uh, more than 50 experts around the world and to, to make a workshop with a smaller group of experts in order to um, comment the results of the study. The result is uh, um, the contents of this uh, webinar, which is uh, um, divided in four categories. In the first part of the webinar last Monday, we uh, talked about uh, changing consumption, changing production and consumption. And the second part was, was uh, mm, uh, special organization. Today, we will be focused on uh, the other two categories, uh, which are uh, supply chain management and distribution and technologies and equipment. I think that they are two uh, important categories uh, of grid and interest for all participants. For those that did not participate to the first day, um, we will share with you also the link to the recording uh, for the first uh, part. It will be on YouTube in order to allow also other authorities to gather uh, knowledge from uh, this webinar. Today we will be focused on this, the yellow part of the slide and uh, there are a lot of activities to be, to be done so I don't want to steal your time. Just uh, one reminder is dedicated to the, to the rules which will be um, uh, represented during the, the webinar by ILIM. Uh, there will be uh, of course a presentation about the first category which is supply chain management and distribution then there will be an interaction and an interactive part in which you are asked to give importance to each trend so one for very low importance in your opinion and five to highest importance in your opinion and if you have any question please write your question in the chat in uh, just below uh, just uh, at the bottom of uh, the, the slides if possible we will provide answers during the webinar or after the webinar in written or with a recorded interview uh, just a last reminder after the webinar you will receive a survey after this uh, the answer you can download the, the list of sources and relevant information used to make this presentation. The PDF version of the presentation of these uh, slides will be shared with the participant after the webinar to the registration email. So if you um, use a different email to register, please inform uh, Eleonora. I think that's all. I will leave the floor uh, and introduce uh, uh, Marcin uh, uh, and Piotr from, from uh, Ilimum, Ilim, which is kindly hosting this webinar. Thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Marcin Foltenski. Uh, and now I would like to, to move to the, uh, to the supply chain management and distribution. As you can see on the screen, this uh, category is the third one. Uh, is the third one uh, we would like to discuss with you and uh, within this category eight specific trends have been defined logistics industry consolidation vertical and horizontal collaboration green supply chain principles omnichannel logistics freight quality partnership off-peak hours deliveries and unbundling logistic services on demand and the last but not least deliver it to the trunk of a car. Supply chain encompasses the following three functions. Uh, we can say that supply of materials to uh, manufacturers. The, man uh, the second one is the manufacturing process. And the third one is the distribution of finished goods through the network of distributors and retailers to a final customer. Complete complexity of supply chain requires efficient planning and management of all activities involved in sourcings, 
procurement, warehousing, and of course, transportation. Uh, in a sense, supply chain management uh, integrates supply and demand management within uh, cross companies. And we can say that the primary objectives of supply chain management is to fulfill a customer demands through the most efficient use of resources, including distribution capacity, inventory, and labor. In theory, a supply chain seeks, uh, seeks to, to manage, to match, sorry, demand with supply and uh, do so with the minimal inventory. And of course, uh, various aspects of optimizing the supply chain it includes, for example, uh, 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 liaising with uh, suppliers to eliminate bottlenecks as so sorry, to strike balance between uh, lowest material cost and transportation, implementing, for example, just-in-time techniques to optimize manufacturing flow, maintaining the right mix of, of location of factories and distribution centers to serve customer markets. And uh, we can say that supply chain management theories and methods, which I mentioned uh, above, are seldom used when planning and evo uh, evaluating urban logistics. And of course, this uh, this is leading to fragmentation of urban freight flows, uh, unutilized uh, freight vehicles, empty running, and uh, in consequently considerable uh, contributing to traffic congestion, uh, no, uh, noise, uh, low air quality, and large commercial road traffic within the cities. And now we would uh, we would move to to specific trends. And the first one is logistics industry consolidation. Uh, consolidation is a dominant theme in every industry sector across the globe, and the transportation and third-party logistics industry is the center of the trend. In the predicts of global logistics for 2016, the analysts of Gartner said that they expect that by 2020, the top 10 global third-party logistics providers will control 80% of the world logistic volume. As a result, Gartner further expects bifurcation in logistic service provider as the market segments into a relatively small number of these huge global 3PL providers. While at the other end of the spectrum, there will be niche players that will often end up working for the global third-party logistic providers. There will be limited room for mid-sized generalists, Gartner notes, and uh, Consolidation of logistic providers will lead also to consolidation of freight flows and will have very positive impact uh, on, on the market. And one of the best practices uh, or examples of such a trend is a case from far Australia. Australia, it's a Patrick Corporation, uh, it's the largest logistic and stevedoring corporation and toll holdings. Another one uh, from Australia, biggest trucking outfits, moving 20% of its frail, freight by rail. Sorry, The two companies formed a consortium to bid on two Australian government-owned rail companies, National Rail and Freight Corp, that were put up for sale through a competitive tender process. So this is the uh, case of such a trend like, like logistic industry consolidation. As we can see, it's... Uh, common all over the world. And what are the key findings for functional urban areas from this trend? Uh, for sure, this uh, trend will cause better coordination of supplies, better assets utilization, and uh, on the other hand, less congestion and uh, reduced pollution of the air. Uh, expert uh, from Delphi Research uh, opinion to be presented uh, here. We asked them what they expect from this trend, uh, logistic industry consolidation, how intense it will be, and uh, it is uh, estimated uh, to be moderate and high uh, influence uh, for, uh, for us. And uh, on the other hand, time horizon is expected that this trend will be important um, just before 2030. And now we can move to the next trend. The next trend is the vertical and horizontal collaboration. And what does it mean, cooperation? Uh, cooperation is often seen as a fruitful path 
to consolidating freight volumes, leading to a higher and efficient utilization of resources. Uh, and we can see uh, the cooperation in two ways, vertical and horizontal. Uh, vertical collaboration typically involves different partners in the supply chain. I mean, the, for example, suppliers, manufacturers, logistic service providers, and they are working together, leading to, for example, to the concept such as collaborative planning uh, forecasting or uh, replenishment and efficient consumer responses. Uh, the horizontal cooperation involves uh, companies operating at the same level. That's the biggest difference, of course, within the supply chain. I mean, the, for example, the freight, freight forwarders uh, are cooperating. And horizontal cooperation in logistics is receiving more and more uh, attention. And best practice which describes the concept of collaboration is the collaborative distribution trial which was launched between uh, two companies, the Kimberly Clark Corporation and Unilever's Home and Personal Care Unit. Uh, in the first experiment, these two companies made joint deliveries to the customers with each company filling half of each truck. Uh, with that early effort, Kimberly Clark pioneered the concept of collaboration, collaborative distribution, also known as a shared or collaborative supply chain, a practice that is now uh, sweeping the whole Europe. Uh, in a shared supply chain, two or more companies use the same distribution facilities and transportation services to the serve mutual customer. Uh, in, uh, in the best practice, uh, Kimberly cooperation between the Kimberly and Unilever uh, the, the reduces cost for, uh, for manufacturers and providers, more frequent uh, replenishment uh, for retailers. And today, the original partners continue to collaborate uh, in the Netherlands, where they have almost 230 shared customers. And for example, Kimberly Clark and Unilever make 80% of their deliveries in the Netherlands through this uh, shared supply chain. And what are the findings for the focus, uh, focus uh, urban areas? Sharing assets, of course, and capacities may result in increased consolidation and higher capacity utilization, which, of course, may reduce the number of freight movements within the city. Uh, and of course reduce the, the flights, uh, the fleet size and empty travel for collaborating logistics services. The next trend identified in this category is green supply chain principles. Uh, besides the need for faster and individualized services, there is a growing movement toward far and responsible logistics driven by megatrends such as sustainable consumption, digitalization and globalization, companies are now increasing focus on turning social and environmental challenges into opportunities by creating far and sustainable solutions that generate social as well as business value along the supply chain. Looking ahead, this trend will increase transparency with, uh, within supply chains and require new circular economy concept in logistics. Um, Subject uh, recently published report uh, in the DHL illustrates that first specific use cases in logistics. These are trends that will impact or perhaps even disrupt the logistics industry over the coming years. We can count here a few examples um, of, of such a new approach and trend. The drugs giant GSK GlaxoSmithKline is one of which realized regardless whether outside operations are outsourced, the opportunity for significant carbon footprint reduction, 80% in GSK case, comes from indirect emissions and have begun to look at how to fix it. Another com American company, UBS, recently announced that all of the new 700 class 8 trucks will be running from late 2030 and 40 uh, will be powered by liquefied natural gas, LNG. The company also provides paperless invoices for international shipments and claims to use pioneering fuel conservation strategies. And the third example is from automaker Toyota, 
was declared that world best global green brand and uh, has been one of the forerunners and has reduced emissions connected with its logistic processes, achieving results through improved assets utilization, sharing vehicle transportation with other companies, and model shift. And what are the findings for the functional urbanas here? It's of course reduction in pollu pollution and noise level in FUAS. It's also a rise of environmental awareness of other companies and shippers. And uh, we can expect also here the new logistic services that will be launched in the latest future. Next trend is very closely related to the e-commerce, which was presented as a trend uh, last week during the first webinar. Omnichannel retailing uh, foresees the integration of several online and offline retail channels in which customers can buy, pick up or receive goods and of course manage payments uh, to the, uh, to the uh, companies. This, of course, brings challenges to the logistics activities in terms of stock management, number of deliveries and visibility of the supply chain among different retail channels. Uh, logistics as a backbone of retail needs to react and offer innovative omni-channel solutions that satisfy the demand for more personalized dynamic delivery options as well as fulfillment services at the competitive price level. And as a best practice, uh, we, can, we can present the company's Macy's. And Macy's case study reveals a retail giant's comprehensive approach to omni channels. Macy's research showed that about two thirds of all shopping trips start online with their customers uh, uh, researching op uh, options on their desktops or handheld devices. So Macy's operates as an omnichannel retailer with a single view of customer, inventory, and of course businesses. Its strategy is based on the following key initiatives. The first one is the uh, My Macy's lo uh, localization program. It's the program to deliver a merchandise assortment, assortment to the personalized shopping experience uh, that is unique to the individual customer. The second one is the omnichannel integration, which brings the online and brick and uh, mortar channels together in a single integrated approach. And the third one is the buy online pickup in store. It's, it's the new process combines online and in-store channels, establishing a new dimension in customer access and convenience. And what are the key findings for FUAS? Fast, of course, fast and flexible deliveries need a smaller lot sizes. And increasing the number of deliveries uh, expon exponentially while decreasing the number of line items in the system and of course deliveries fragmentation to the to the final destination to the final customers and of course more home and office delivery services and uh, and uh, within the trends we can see the growing importance of parcel locals as an element of delivery service in the cities and transport couriers companies and uh, the overall assessments of Delphi expert panel is that the development of omnichannel logistics will have a very high impact on urban logistics and will become the main uh, sale channel in the medium run, more probably before than after 2030. Another trend in this category is uh, freight quality partnerships, uh, so-called FUQPs. Mm -hmm. uh, they are means for local governments, businesses and freight operators, environmental groups and the local communities and other interested stakeholders to work together to address specific freight transport problems. They provide a forum to achieve best practice in environmental sensitive, economic, safe and efficient freight transport. Important characteristic of an FQP is that it provides a mechanism for industry and local government to work together in partnership to produce tangible outcomes to localized freight transport problems. One of the best uh, examples of uh, such a FQP is the Central London Freight Quality Partnership, 
is a partnership between local governments such as uh, Central London, City of uh, Westminster, Camden and so on. There are local businesses in it, the freight industry and others with the interest in freight issues with centra within Central London. The aims of the partnership are to, to develop an understanding of freight transport problems and to develop constructive solutions. The partnership was initiated in 2005 after a recommendation from a public-private collaboration. A membership is free of charge and has no more formal responsibility or mission from the local or national government. But uh, it worked very, very well so far. Uh, what are the key findings for, uh, for us uh, from this uh, freight quality partnership? It's possibility of expressing their point of view for all the stakeholders around the topic. Decisions uh, concerning implementation of organizational solution are taken on the basis of agreement of all interested parties, what increase acceptance of, of uh, decisions, and the uh, possibilities of building compromise among potential sides of the conflict are visible, for example, between pedestrians and drivers. And uh, uh, we also asked experts uh, uh, what they think about the uh, uh, influence of this trend uh, for FUAS in the next uh, future, in the nearest future, and uh, they expect uh, rather moderate and uh, high uh, influence of uh, FQPs on uh, FUAS, and uh, we can expect that uh, it, it will become true before 2030. The next trend is off peak hours deliveries and uh, it means it's, it's a program uh, may offer relief for traffic management problems uh, in the cities which are often caused by last mile deliveries and these deliveries make up more than 80% of all traffic, freight traffic uh, in the urban areas and the, this program uh, are be, programs are being implemented that produce a shift of deliveries from the regular hours, I mean in the morning from 6 till the evening uh, 6, 7 p.m. to the off hours, it means from 7 uh, p.m. to 6 a.m. And the objective of night time delivery policy is to allow more silent trucks to cooperate uh, in the city center area in late hours in order to avoid congestion uh, while respecting the noise legislation and special tracks, special equipment and corresponding driver behavior are the uh, conditions uh, required. And the best practice for that, uh, that trends is uh, Dutch government uh, program from, uh, from 1992 and this, this program sets, uh, set out standards for noise emissions during uh, loading and unloading in retail trade and craft businesses. And this resulted in a project called PEAK and in 2004 the PEAK certification scheme for vehicles and the other equipment operating under 60 decibels uh, which will be suitable for use in nighttime deliveries without causing noise dis disturbances. To achieve the standards, each product is uh, acoustically measured and most functioning uh, function uh, emitting under 60 decibels at seven and a half meters from the sound sources. It's that it's then uh, the mid suitable for out of uh, hours deliveries that will not cause, uh, cause noise disturbance to nearby residents. And in 2007, the Albert Heijn retail chain in, in, in the Netherlands has started 10 pilot projects at the same time. And, and the aim of the project was realization the supply to selected supermarkets at night and early morning. And during the three months uh, period, there was realize, realized uh, more than 1,000 supply by vehicles and equipment specially adopted and dedicated to satisfy the requirements of the peak program. And the key findings coming from this, uh, from this uh, best practice, uh, we can say that 
this this other kind of case showed that after the introduction of peak standard, there was achieved significant economic savings. Savings, for example, decreased total cost of transportation about the 33,000 of, of euro. And of course, reduction of environmental pollution about 30%. Another trend we would like to present uh, for you today is unbundling of logistic services on demand. Uh, established supply chain services can be unbundled into singular solutions that can be delivered better through tech-savvy companies. One key area developing fast is asset slide on-demand brokerage platforms that easily match demand and supply for logistic services such as Uber Rush for on-demand delivery services in cities. The ultimate vision for this platform is a super grid coordinating multiplied marketplaces. Beyond the recent hype that degree of disruption to established players remains uncertain due to the complexity and fragmented nature of the logistic industry. Key questions still need to be answered. Is an unbundling of physical, physical transportation and marketplaces really possible and to what degree? And is it feasible to broker complex bundles through a standardized and automated interface. On-demand delivery, formerly named crowd logistics, this trend has significantly advanced over the last two years, triggered especially by the entry of a barrage. This trend covers a broad variety of crowd sources delivery applications. And uh, a little bit more about this case of Uber Rush. It's an innovative new bike and car courier service from Uber. The service is only applicable in the New York City, Chicago, and San Francisco. And first was launched in the year 2014. Uh, Uber Rush lets the user uh, hire a certain messenger uh, courier by using the app. Uh, you use the app like you would like to use the regular Uber and then track your bike messenger on screen as they approach your home or place to business, place of business. Uber Rush does not actually involve any patches of products or transactions and the customer's end, at the customer's end. So this is the, the most significant difference from other uh, competitors like, for example, Amazon Prime now. And the, the next trend, uh, actually the last one within the supply chain management and distribution category is delivery to the trunk of a car. And it's it's uh, another opportunity to deliver a more to a more convenient location than the home of a customer. Is ability to deliver to deliver to the trunk of the customer's car, and this technology allows a customer to authorize uh, one-time keyless access to the car trunk during the specific time period. And once the, the delivery is completed that, uh, and the trunk is, uh, is shut, access permission is automatically revoked. And as we are talking about the best practices, DHL parcel and SMART, uh, the, the car producer, uh, decided to, 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 to start the, the pilot, pilot project, which was started last autumn uh, in, in, in Germany, in Stuttgart and then roll out to the other cities, Cologne, Bonn, and, and Berlin. And owners of uh, smart cars can use their vehicles as mobile addresses for car drops. Potential users can sign up to participate and receive parcels straight to the trunk of their cars. If selected, the car will be retrofitted with a special a connectivity box that allows delivery agents to access to the vehicle to make the delivery. And the joint solution from Smart and DHL Packet is a smartphone based with the smart driver and the DHL parcel courier uh, using specially designed applications. And what are the key findings for the city environment? We can say that the the better coordination of delivery time slots for the for the deliveries to the final cost customer uh, easier of course it's easier uh, and time windowed operations for the for the couriers it's better uh, it's it's better for the for the courier company to optimize uh, the transport routes 
and uh, it's uh, avoided repeated deliveries. And now we would like to invite you for the first interactive part during our webinar. Uh, you will be invited to make uh, short answers in a questionnaire. You will uh, uh, see on the screen. Uh, you need to, to firstly uh, indicate the category of the organization and then Okay, thank you very much, uh, Martin, for this uh, presentation of trends. So, what concerns the supply chain management and distribution? So, first, we see uh, that the majority of answers have been given by authorities. So, this is our targeted audience here in this webinar. Uh, so, concerning the first trend, logistics industry consolidation, uh, the majority of you think that it will have a high importance so uh, all this concept of consolidation which brings uh, better utilization of vehicles better results for end customers and, and lower level of emissions is actually very important also from our point of view what concerns the uh, the desk work research and delta analysis but it will definitely have an impact in the longer uh, term what concerns the vertical and horizontal collaboration? Again, we see uh, high uh, importance uh, from your point of view, which is actually, again, something which will bring to better utilization uh, on, the, on the longer run. Uh, and uh, this is something we have to take into consideration in the near future. Uh, green supply chain principles, uh, moderate to high importance, according to the answers you gave. Uh, so these green aspects are more and more important, but at the moment they are still, uh, as it is also evident from the desk um, work analysis, uh, something which uh, still, to, still needs to be taken into consideration because everything what is green, it has to be somehow compensated by someone. So if you have a green supply chain, it is normally uh, um, uh, not so, uh, it is much more expensive, so that's why uh, we, we can expect uh, the full range into longer perspective. Uh, on the channel logistics, the majority of you voted this is the high importance. Uh, of course, there are already several examples, as, as you saw from the presentation of on the channel logistics, so we are trying to combine together uh, normal retail in stores and, and internet uh, uh, shopping. So from that point of view, this is already evident uh, also from uh, an analysis we have done and it is also uh, quite clear evident from your answers. Uh, what concerns the freight quality partnership? This is actually one of the main topics uh, we are dealing with the Sultotel project. Uh, um, as, uh, as I can see, there are some uh, answers voting very uh, high importance, uh, but majority of you voted as a high importance. This is also very clear because uh, we saw uh, there are many initiatives where you try to involve different stakeholders in the process of making policies, of making measures, uh, because uh, if they are involved, uh, then the policies and measures are done according to their expectations and they are much more successful uh, as if they won't be uh, involved in that. Off-peak hour delivery is uh, quite interesting. Uh, you think, the, 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 the majority of you think the, the, uh, the topic is of moderate or of high importance. Uh, there have been already several examples of success stories of off-peak off hour deliveries, but there are also several examples that off-peak hours haven't been implemented because you would need to shift these deliveries into the night time period. And uh, as Piotr and Martin explained, there is a problem of uh, noise of freight vehicles. And there is also a problem that uh, some uh, shopkeepers are not there at this time periods. So from that point of view, uh, I would really agree with the results of your opinion that this is at the moment still not really so much important. Uh, what concerns the unbounding of logistics services on demand? Uh, the majority of you think it is a moderate importance. Uh, I would agree that for the short time period, but for the long time period, I think this on-demand services will take over all, all the rest. 
So for the moment, I, I, I do agree. I think it is a moderate importance because the, the technology is not really on the level yet. The penetration level is not on the level yet that would be able to cope with that. Uh, delivery is to the trunk of a car, a moderate importance. We also see some answers, uh, low importance or very low importance. Uh, of course, there are some trials all around uh, the world trying to do that on a different level. Uh, and uh, yes, maybe this is going to take uh, just a smaller share uh, of, of, of freight deliveries. So this would be for the for the first part. So part uh, See, now. now we have finished the interactive parts of the of the webinar, and let's move to the next slide, which is a sum up of the supply chain management and distribution trends. You can see all the trends gathered together on the on the screen. Identified trends are summarized and shortly shortly described with additional assessments on the potential impacts on. Uh, functional urban area freight transport and impact assessment is made based on the uh, indication identified in the literature and is uh, ranged from low medium to high impact and divided into short term I mean the less than five years and long term more than five years category the stars besides the names means the importance of the trends flow from low to high and also expected significance for functional urban area. What you can see, omnichannel logistics, uh, logistics industry consolidation and collaboration, vertical and horizontal are the most important ones in terms of significance for functional urban areas. On the other hand, also omnichannel logistics is happening now, so you can see two stars in the in this box. Other uh, other trends are also important, but uh, significance and importance on functional urban areas is a little bit visible. So the perspective for broad introduction is longer than five years perspective. This is uh, the short uh, sum up of this category supply chain management and distribution. Now we can move to the fourth trends category of our webinar regarding technologies and equipment. In this part, we will uh, present uh, also technologies like clean vehicles, ICT and ITS systems, and uh, for example, automated system and autonomous vehicles. But on the other hand, we also are going to present trends uh, which are huge concepts like Internet of Things and physical Internet. So, innovation in the innovations in technology are changing how the world does business and technology is dramatically changing how entities in the logistics industry function in nearly every aspect. From increased affordability and efficiency of the transportation management systems to the application of Bluetooth technology for superior tracking of product movements and to new vehicles, concepts, and new propulsion systems. The use of electric vehicles has been recognized as an efficient and promising strategy for urban freight and also successful impl successfully implemented for deliveries from the urban micro consolidated centers to customers. On the other side, the use of natural gas vehicles is still lagging behind, mainly due to restriction caused by legal regulations on service stations, imperfect information, and failure to coordinate complementary markets. Regardless to use the proposed technology of vehicle for urban freight transport, vehicles can be used more efficiently with the application of advanced information and communication technologies. The logistics industry has already embarrassed a wide range of information and communication technologies and reaped environmental benefits to reduce travel distances, fewer vehicle movements, better matching of vehicles to work and improved level of load consolidation. Application of ICT in freight transport enables transport users to identify the services most suited to their purposes and logistic operators to strategically manage freight shipments and deliveries. Alongside the implementation of new vehicle proposal ICT and ITS, also several technologies to support automated road vehicles were developed and some are of operating in real life application. For example, dozens of driverless trucks are being used to haul materials in iron or mine in Australia. And uh, 
the first trend we uh, would like to present in this category is connected with this clean vehicles. It's uh, the environmental gains are in the future expected to come from the increased efficiency of the internal combustion engine vehicles on one side and on the progressive development of alternative fuel vehicles on the other. Recent developments uh, in these alternative fuel vehicles is confirming significant potential for reducing the negative impact of freight in urban areas, especially in terms of energy savings achieved by using low energy and low emission vehicles. Among alternative options, electricity seems to show the biggest advantages. Nevertheless, these reductions in emissions by electric vehicles would be only possible within a scenario of low carbon electricity production. Uh, the implementation of alternative fuel vehicles will need to overcome also several other challenges and restrictions to what they watch produce, such as lack of infrastructure, high cost of introducing them, and an insufficient maintenance and servicing system. Uh, one of the uh, best practices is usage of uh, cargo bicycles, and uh, we, we can see different examples uh, from Germany uh, with the climate initiative. Uh, to Romania with the first bike bicycle couriers introduced in 2012. Also, the case in Belgium, in Gent, so where target cargo bike sharing scheme was installed in 2012. And in Switzerland, where already in 1997 a bike home delivery service uh, was uh, uh, introduced. Uh, key findings for few of us uh, from this uh, trend. Uh, we can count on a convenience introduction of environmental friendly vehicle users, uh, such as use of bus lane, no parking fees, free entry for city center and lower taxes. Possible danger is, on the other hand, for pedestrians related to very silent electric vehicles. We can expect also, as a result of uh, introducing of this trend to the everyday life, the pollution and noise reduction. And uh, what we uh, can also add here is the opinion of uh, um, experts uh, from the Delphi survey. They expect a very high influence uh, of this trend on uh, for us, uh, and it, it is expected uh, quite uh, soon, uh, just before 2030. The next trend uh, is dedicated ICT and ITS systems. And advan uh, advances in information and communication technology provide opportunities for improving the performance of urban freight systems. The implementation of ICT for city logistics leads to price re reduction, what causes the changes in the behavior of individual companies and customers and cities' logistics systems. Intelligent transportation system solutions can increase transparency and integrity in the supply chain through innovative smart truck concept and of course the internet and ITS will continue to provide efficiency in logistics where multiply possibilities for e-commerce emerge in the near future. The internet, uh, internet and ITS do not only influence the logistics systems but also the business to customer and B2B e-commerce, e-logistics, e-fleet management, for example. As a best practice dedicated for the ICT and ITS systems, we can see a SHIP. SHIP company is an on-demand brokerage platform uh, which easily match uh, demand and supply of logistics services in the cities where developed. SHIP is a courier uh, service company. The company pick up uh, packages and ships items through the uh, through US postal uh, services and other major uh, uh, American carriers. Uh, the company was founded in San Francisco in 2013 sorry, and company provides a mobile application where, by which user can, users can enter a packages pickup and uh, destination addresses and upload a photo of a package to be shipped. In 2015, SHIP added uh, ship returns functionality to its application 
uh, whereby shoppers can return items they purchase online from selected merchants, including, for example, Amazon, uh, Target, and not from merchants. And what are the key findings for uh, functional urban areas? We can say in general that ICT and I, uh, ICT and I, uh, IPS uh, tools provides online information to help minimize uh, congestion, CO2, and uh, air and noise pollution within the city when developing sustainable freight logistics. Based on the results uh, coming from the from the systems, uh, planners are able to identify innovative and sustainable solutions to help streamline delivery activity and create sustainable urban logistics uh, systems for a smarter city. The next trend is not only trend but also the um, huge concept uh, named Internet of Things. Uh, it represents the next step toward the digitalization of the society and the economy, where objects and people are interconnected through communication networks and report about their status and our, our, uh, the surrounding environment. According to the Cisco, to the Cisco report, it's estimated that, that by 2020, more than 50 billion objects will be connected to the Internet, presenting an immense 1.9 trillion opportunity in logistics. The Internet of Things can provide a platform for decentralized management for city logistics, quickly transforming data into decisions may increasingly become a reality and a key technological enabler to improve city logistic operations and logistic provider business strategies. The Internet of Things empowers smart objects to be active participants in self-steering, event-driven logistic processes. However, only a few logistic applications with a substantial business impact have materialized IoT so far, and this is largely due to the shortage of standards in the industry, security concerns, and that fact that the recent IoT innovations have mainly been developed for the customer market. Therefore, logistics will have to wait until similar regularized versions that meet business requirements come to market. And out of several benefits arising from using information technology for urban transport, there is also downside related to the security awareness. Due to the high risk of data breaches and hacking of the data systems, the adoption of such technologies is a slowdown. However, several efforts are devoted to eliminating security risks. One of the examples uh, of uh, IoT uh, usage is uh, DHL case uh, with the smart sensors, localization and condition monitoring through IoT is taking place there. Telematic sensors in trucks and multi-sensors tags and items transmit data on location conditions and if a package has been opened or not. Uh, this smart sensor solution will offer full condition monitoring. This intelligent sensor can monitor temperature, humidity, while also indicating shock and light events to ensure complete, uh, integr complete integrity during the transportation. So what are the key findings for, for us from IoT? Development is optimization of transport infrastructure usage, better risk management thanks to the better information, protection against crime and accidents involving cargo, new possibilities of management uh, city space, and better visibility of cargo and supply chains. And here we also asked uh, uh, experts uh, what is their opinion about this trend and its uh, intensity and influence on FUAS and uh, almost all uh, indicated that this is very high uh, uh, influence expected, uh, high or very high, and it is expected uh, before year 2030. Uh, big data and data mining techniques. Uh, what does it mean? Thanks to the development and deployment of ICT and ITS uh, solutions and of course uh, IoT concept which was presented uh, by Piotr, we can easily collect big data of pickup delivery truck movements of, of goods movements within the urban areas at uh, lower cost and the analysis of big data of truck movements in urban areas uh, allow us to gain insight into the behavior of the drivers, for example. And of course, logistics is being transformed through the power of data-driven insights. Unprecedented uh, amounts of data can now be captured from various uh, sources along the whole supply chain. 
and of course capitaliz uh, capitalizing uh, on the value of big data offers massive potential to optimize capacity utilization, uh, improve customer experience, reduce risk, and create, of course, the new business models. Several data uh, mining, uh, mining techniques were used in different areas of logistics in the urban environment, and for example, finding the routing patterns of truck drivers, optimizing pickup deliveries, or developing a city logistics model based on a cloud-based platform. And uh, what are the future challenges within the big data and data mining? In the field of big data technologies, we can say that uh, the, the future ch challenges is that uh, remains the open data exchange between the logistics provider and co uh, co customer, and of course, skills to understand and handle advanced anal uh, analytical tools, and of course, the issue of compliance with data security and privacy regulations. According to the best practice, which is dedicated for big data and data mining techniques, we can, we can present the DHL parcel volume prediction. Uh, it's an analytical tool which measures influences of external factors on the expected volume of parcels and correlates external data with the internal network data results in a big data prediction model that uh, significantly increase operational capacity of planning. And what are the key findings for, for functional urban areas? We can say that big data models help to optimize logistics process and improves uh, customer services and it leads to transport capacity planning optimization as well. And uh, we ask uh, the experts so uh, about, about the strength. So the overall assessment of, of Delphi panel is that the development of big data and data mining techniques will have a high impact on urban logistics and will become widely used in the medium run uh, probably before the year 2030. And the next trend uh, is also the kind of the huge concept uh, and very visionary concept uh, which is uh, expected to be fulfilled uh, fully in 2050. And it has connection to the city logistics and uh, it will profoundly change freight transport and logistics, especially in terms of increase economic, environmental, and societal efficiency and sustainability. In this sense, several ideas, among others, are also vision of hyper-connected city logistic system arises. Uh, physical Internet is a vision of an end-to-end -end global logistic network, but uh, uh, as I mentioned, it, it will uh, make it true maybe in the, the, the further future. Uh, companies constantly strive to improve the efficiency of the logistic networks that move their goods worldwide. Although performance level have increased significantly over recent decades, they are far from satisfactory. For example, too many containers and freight vehicles transport empty space or are idle because of operational delays. All too often disruptions prevent production from reaching consumer markets, adding to the waste uh, that pervades many logistic networks. The physical internet proposed to eliminate these inefficiencies in much the same way like the internet transformed the flow of information around the globe. Uh, now we experience the first uh, attempts to solve particular problems in the concept of physical internet. One of these uh, attempts is a Modolushka project. Uh, this example, this uh, objective was here to achieve the first genuine contribution to the development of interconnected logistics at the European level in close coordination with the North American partners and the International Physical Internet Initiative. The goal of the project was to enable operating uh, with the developed isomodular logistic units of sized adequate for real model and commodal flows of fast-moving consumer goods, so FS FMCG. Uh, Modulushka integrated five interrelated working fields such as uh, developing a vision, the development of a set of exchangeable modular logistic units, uh, establishing digital interconnectivity, 
also interconnected logistic operator operators platform and two implementations of pilots during the project. Now, what are the uh, implications for the FUAS? Uh, sharing of assets will lead for sure to optimization of resources, reduction of cargo traffic in the cities and increase of load factor, better planning of supplies and last but not least reduction of the air pollution. And the next trend is dealing with the automated systems and autonomous vehicles. And the trend towards the uh, autonomous logistics is already present uh, at the time. And breakthrough uh, in the sensor and imaging technologies have resulted in a new generation of self-driving vehicles that are more flexible and reliable than ever before. And from the autonomous forklifts to the driveless trucks, uh, self-driving vehicles will transform logistics by uh, unlocking new levels of safety, efficiency, and of course, the quality. And uh, unnamed aerial uh, vehicles or drones could change tomorrow logistics by adding a new form of express delivery via carefully coordinated air networks while uh, unnamed uh, aerial uh, vehicles will not replace traditional ground-based transportation they will provide value in the areas of for example high traffic congestion or in uh, remote uh, locations and dhl parcels has successfully concluded a three-month test of its third uh, parcel copter generation the trial ran part, uh, in part of larger research and innovative project was conducted between uh, January and March 2016 in the Bavarian community. It represents the first time worldwide that a parcel service provider has directly integrated a parcel copter logistically into its delivery chain. Private consumers uh, within the within the uh, dedicated area uh, and up on the uh, Wilkomslaum plateau were invited to the test out the special developed uh, pack stations that the uh, parcel copter skyboard. During the three months trial period, uh, they could uh, simply insert their shipment into the skyboard. Uh, to initiate uh, automated shipment and delivery per parcel copter. A total uh, of 130 autonomous uh, loading and offloading cycles were out, uh, automatically performed and each round strip from, from the valley to the plateau at roughly 1,200 meters above the sea level covered 8 kilometers of flight. The drone's cargo was typically either sporting uh, goods or urgently needed medicines uh, and it arrived at the arm station within just eight, eight minutes of takeoff. And uh, to compare with the traditional situation, the same trip by car takes more than 30 minutes during the winter condition, for example. And what are the key findings for functional urban area? We can say that Highly automated vehicles are expected to be introduced to a market and several impacts, especially in the cities, are expected, such as environments, in transport reliability and urban centers accessibility, which would lead to evolving demands and request changes uh, on the business models, require, uh, requiring private companies and public authorities in charge of transport to assess and anticipate future needs. And the overall assessment of the, of the panel of the Delphi experts is that the development of automated systems and autonomous vehicles will have a moderate impact on urban logistics and are expected to be widely introduced to the market after the year 2030. The next trend is uh, more related to software than to technology. Uh, it's transport and logistic optimization uh, tools, uh, software to do it. The track routing and decision support systems are based on ITS, intelligent transport systems. They require high quality real time traffic data, information on the road network, and land use in the area. 
Large benefits can be expected when the guidance system is connected to commercial vehicle operation system to optimize fleet management. The costs are mainly those associated with the operational costs of the management system, data collection, analysis, and dissemination. There are different such a system ranging from a low-cost technology installations to large-scale network systems. Dynamic routing systems are used by public authorities to enhance safety and prevent violations of access regulation. The private sector uses in-vehicle routing as a part of decision support system to enhance the efficiency of fleet management. Uh, one of the examples of uh, usage of this uh, software is DHL Green Optimization. Uh, based on carbon reports, DHL can analyze their customers' entire logistic chain and work with them to optimize uh, trade routes and transportation modes to reduce their carbon footprint. Additionally, suggest way to improve their overall environmental performance. So one of the examples is uh, shipment from Penang in Malaysia to Bristol in the UK, where customers have so far been able to choose between the slower and more carbon efficient ocean route or the faster but more emission intensive air route. And uh, the key findings for functional urban areas we can come here uh, are with the rise of the competitive online freight marketplaces, more information will be exposed, including prices and customer satisfaction. Thousands of well-run local and regional carriers will be able to compete against the larger firms with larger sales forces. And on the other hand, smaller companies can offer lower rates and better services in the specific market niche they serve. Tube underground and long distance systems uh, is the system which consists of special dedicated freight pipeline networks that are uh, either newly built or integrated into modified and existing pipes. It enables a high volume movement of freight into high congested area with no impact on surface uh, transportation system. Hyperloop, a very well uh, known concept, Hyperloop Technologies is a new way to move people and things at airline speed for the price of a bus ticket. It's on demand, energy efficient and of course probably safe. And the concept of Hyperloop transportation was introduced and named by Elon Musk in August 2013. And as a best practice, uh, we, can, we can discuss the Palma de Mallorca pneumatic waste collection system. And uh, we can say that one of the most usual problems, especially, especially within the historic centers of many old cities, is the collection of solid waste with the aim of offering a more streamlined and uh, convenient ways collection services for citizens and shopkeepers in certain areas and in more singular district uh, of the old cities that the pneumatic waste collection system has been introduced in the Palma de Mallorca and now the system transports the waste from the pillar boxes installed on the public road to the central collection plant by means of network of underground tubes. Once in the, in the center, they are placed in large containers for a subsequent transportation to the treatment center. And we can say that pneumatic waste collection functions successfully in the center of Palma since 2002. And as a result of around uh, more than 20, uh, 24 uh, thousand citizens and big amount of commercial shops benefit from this modern system. And uh, system collects around 4,500 uh, 4, tons per year with an average of uh, more than 14 uh, tons per day. And what are the key findings for, the, for this specific uh, best practice? The main advantages of pneumatic uh, waste collection system are reduce uh, the visual impact of containers and heavy waste in public uh, uh, trough uh, farms, improvement of street image and environment uh, quality, environmental quality, noise of course reduction and environmental impact, 
uh, bad smells, uh, especially during during the summer, it was uh, very important and noisy for the for the uh, for the citizens and for the tourists, of course. Uh, greater space uh, space available for for the parking places or, or for the other uh, other purposes. And uh, this uh, this uh, this pneumatic uh, waste collection system allows for selective waste collection uh, at the sources. And of course, uh, we uh, can count uh, more, more, more and more longer list uh, of technologies which has influence on for us. Uh, but uh, here we would like to present a short list the most important ones in the category of others. Uh, so here we have, for example, low cost sensor technology which enable new application within the logistic industry with the access to low cost sensors. Logistics is likely to increase the use of sensors, like sensors equip mobile devices and create a smart infrastructure for monitoring, inspecting and volume scanning in the supply chain. Another technology are digital, digital identifiers, enable more major management of supply chains by providing them new level of transparency, traceability and authentication. Uh, Another important technology to be mentioned here is augmented reality, which will provide new perspectives in logistic planning, process execution, and transportation. A technology which is expecting to have a strong influence uh, in warehousing, uh, for example, are the bionic enhancement technologies uh, with the support potential support to, to the logistic workforce in IRS uh, warehousing, but also communication, process execution, optimization, and most importantly, minimalizing health and safety, safety risk in the supply chain. And uh, automation technologies like collaborative rob robotics with a significantly rise in order to meet increasingly complex customer needs and to cope with the aging for workforce and skill shortages. One of the examples uh, of uh, use of these technologies is, uh, again, DHL solution, uh, which is uh, devoted to um, uh, traceability of, of uh, transportation of this company. Uh, so IoT will uh, make possible uh, to uh, track the uh, freight transportation will move beyond track and trace and will uh, will be possible even on the, on the middle of the ocean. And uh, what will be the uh, key findings for, for us from all these technologies? Uh, it for sure will create uh, more smart solutions uh, for city and for us. And new technologies will make possible faster loading and unloading operations in the for us, more dynamic and customized delivery service for customers. And now we would like to invite you for the second interactive part of our webinar. Uh, so again, I will ask you to uh, indicate category of your organization and then uh, vote. In, in terms of and just like a uh, sum up uh, for this uh, second part of today's webinar uh, named technologies and equipment, I would like to uh, mention that uh, the most uh, Influensive trends we are we presented in this second part of our webinar uh, are ICT systems and ITS systems, of course, Internet of Things uh, in terms of importance, as well as big data and data mining technologies and transport logistic optimization tools. We have also um, uh, a few concepts and trends which are not. Uh, uh, expected to have a very big influence uh, uh, in the nearest future, but will be very important in, in the uh, longest time. Uh, it, was, it is a physical internet. Uh, it are also um, uh, tube underground long distance systems, which uh, are not uh, developed yet, but we, we have the first uh, news that such a systems are, are beginning to, to to, to, to be present, like this one in Los Angeles, started by Elon Musk. And uh, we can expect uh, that all these uh, trends will 
have a strong influence on on on, on for us in longer shorter uh, time and now we shift to the uh, technology and equipment okay thank you very much uh, so uh, again the majority of votes came from authorities uh, what concerns the clean vehicles, uh, we can see clearly high or very high importance from your point of view. Uh, there is already quite a lot of initiatives all around the Europe uh, to implement clean vehicles, especially for last mile deliveries. Uh, but when we think about um, the functional urban areas, we have to think about how to connect this uh, uh, short, medium or long distance freight with this uh, with these clean vehicles and these clean vehicles are mainly implemented just for the last mile deliveries, but definitely they are re really uh, important. ITS and, IT and, and ITS systems, uh, we see that the majority of you voted this is a very high importance. Of course, this new concept, new technologies will bring some concrete uh, improvements which have been haven't been possible so far so these new technologies are really crucial and again we can see the same story from the internet of things uh, it is uh, actually already there but not fully in operation on all the fields but logistics is concerned so so again internet of things uh, uh, i would fully agree uh, it will have high importance even more in the future what concerns big data and data mining techniques, uh, I would just add to what it was presented that at the moment we are lacking data about freight flows. For example, in circuited project, we are now trying to gather data about freight flows in our functional urban areas and we don't have them. So huge efforts uh, are being uh, transferred to that, but in the future, uh, we will have uh, a lot of data and in that, in that uh, moment, we will need to implement data mining techniques in order to gain something useful out of all this data. So uh, definitely uh, important in, in, the, in the longer perspective. Uh, the physical internet, of course, as presented by Piotr, this is a concept which will be fully in operation after 2050. This is a strategy, this is a vision. And so in, from that point of view, at the moment still of moderate importance, but in the future, we will be able to see uh, in full extent. Automated system and autonomous vehicles, uh, it seems quite uh, important. So the majority of you voted it is a high importance. Uh, when we think about drones and all these kind of, uh, of, of options, we saw at the moment uh, quite a lot of, um, of, of um, negative aspects, uh, aspects because of the security and so on. So we'll see how this will involve, but these answers might indicate that this is quite publicly a uh, hot topic at the moment, and from that point of view, uh, we are constantly uh, getting this feedback that this is a very important topic also for the future. Uh, transport optimization, uh, transport and logistics optimization tools, uh, uh, the majority of you voted as a high importance, 37% uh, of you, so I would fully agree with that. These are the so-called so soft measures which can be implemented without huge investment in infrastructure. So from that point of view, this is really highly recommended from, the, uh, from, from our point of view to implement that as, as measures uh, in your functional urban areas. Cube underground and long distance systems, uh, uh, low importance, the majority of road is low importance and moderate importance. Also here I would agree because these tube uh, underground and long distance systems are more uh, mostly uh, dedicated for bigger cities. Uh, it can be quite uh, good results, but uh, maybe not really uh, so much for Central European uh, uh, cities of, of mid-size. Uh, what concerns the other technologies, of course, we put them into the, into the category of other frontier technologies because they are just uh, starting now uh, and they are rising opportunities for the future. So I fully agree why this um, concept is of moderate importance. Okay, that's, that's all what concerns uh, comment on supply chain management and distribution technology and equipment answers. 
Uh, before uh, giving speech to uh, the final speech to Giuseppe, I would just like to have some other final conclusions. Uh, what concerns these two webinars? Uh, these two webinars uh, have presented logistics trends, which will, according to BESC research, which was done by University of Marburg and Delta Analysis, done by uh, ITL, have uh, important influence in functional urban area flight transport in the future. As we saw, there are already several best practices showing that these trend, this trends, these actions can be very successful. Of course, some of them, they will bring um, uh, some, uh, some uh, uh, further advances what concerns the, the, the improvement of logistics processes in, in terms of decrease of uh, freight flows, uh, increase of load factor, but some other, they will have a, a contra, contrary effect. Um, what we can expect in the future, definitely uh, cities will, will increase, so we will continuously see the trend of urbanization, metropolization, and of course, based on this clustering of economic activities in, in big cities. So from that point of view, we will see customers and professional services with increasing share in urban economies. Uh, we can see definitely uh, already today uh, a big influence of e-commerce and we can expect even further development with the concept of increase of freight traffic in residential and urban areas. Uh, uh, what concerns technologies, uh, in particular Internet of Things and big data, will not become a practice in the very short term, but applications, uh, mobile apps, uh, diffusion will significantly grow also in short and medium perspective. Uh, I would like to stress uh, the, 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 the aspects of the innovative services based on collaboration schemes, on consolidation schemes, uh, on collaboration aspects. Uh, this is going to really disrupt the, the urban uh, freight uh, deliveries in future, but it will still need, we will still need some time uh, before we will, we will arrive uh, to that. So, uh, uh, maybe at the very end, I would just like to stress importance uh, uh, of considering freight transport when developing sustainable urban mobility policies and actions, because freight transport is today unfortunately very often neglected in comparison to other, let's say, public transport and other measures uh, which are constantly used and supported. Uh, and freight transport is unfortunately perceived in a negative connotation, uh, like freight vehicles are producing noise, emissions, and congestions, uh, and uh, cities are therefore predominantly introducing restrictive measures. Uh, I would suggest that we have to change that perception because freight transport is crucial for efficient functioning of the cities and try to implement measures which will uh, make these processes uh, efficient, uh, environmental friendly, and uh, from the longer perspective, uh, something which would support uh, the economy of cities and, of course, not harm the citizens. So, thank you very much from my point of view. Giuseppe, the floor is yours. Thank you, Tommy. I want to, to just to close this uh, webinar event as uh, after more or less one hour and a half of uh, so much information uh, in a compressed uh, uh, event uh, is quite uh, and uh, I uh, kindly ask all the participants to um, answer to the questionnaire, to the survey which will be sent within uh, this uh, week to the, to the participants of this uh, webinar in order to uh, continue working on, uh, on this and to be part of this, uh, uh, of this uh, study. Uh, the reward for uh, filling in uh, the electronic survey will be the, 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 the list of resources uh, or used to, to make this uh, presentation. Um, I want to say thank you uh, to all the participants, uh, to Edim, uh, in particular to Piotr Novak and Marcin Folkinski, and uh, to uh, University of Maribor, in particular to Thomas Lapletnik, uh, you know, for uh, the realization of this uh, very uh, nice uh, uh, webinar, and Katia Ansik, uh, always from the um, University of Maribor. 
Um, I thank you also, uh, Eleanor, too, from the Institute of Transport and Logistics uh, for keeping uh, everything uh, organized. Uh, and uh, see you at the next webinars, which will be taken uh, uh, in the next month.